And with apologies to Tricia, we wanted to bring you these pictures live as the family of John McCain, his wife Cindy, and all seven children have arrived at the state capitol for the procession that will bring his body here to the North Phoenix Baptist Church probably in about 45 minutes or so. And of course, we'll stay on the air and continue to bring all of that to you for those who couldn't make it down here. Right now, we'll toss it back to the studio with Emma and Paul, and then we'll be back here shortly, guys. All right, thank you very much, Mark. You're looking live at those pictures right now as they remove Senator McCain's body from the rotunda where he lied in state overnight last night. DPS troopers standing watch over him. This motorcade is expected to begin at about 9.15 this morning. The procession will follow a route up to North Phoenix Baptist Church. There will be a road closure, just FYI, if you're watching this morning and headed out anytime soon. 17th Avenue from Adams to Jefferson will be shut down for the duration of the proceedings this morning. And of course, all of this happening very ceremoniously as it did yesterday. Same way that he came in is the way that he's leaving the Capitol there. The family there, we see that the, the streets right there lined with veterans, volunteers. It's just pretty incredible. They kept the rotunda open last night until after 9 o'clock p.m. so that the very last people standing in line out there to pay their final respects would have the opportunity to do so. In fact, several of McCain's children came back to the rotunda after the services last night to shake hands and thank those who came out to say their goodbyes. Their initial number from the amount of people that came through, about 15,000 is what they are thinking. They really did keep the lines moving. They tried to keep people as much out of the sun as they possibly could. A few problems there, but 15,000 people came out to pay their respects. To the, the procession center. will begin uh, northbound on 17th Avenue to Adams, then Adams to the 17, 17 to Camelback, Camelback northbound on Central up to the church. Let's go back out live to the church right now where Mark Curtis is standing by with Governor Doug Ducey. Mark? Uh, Governor, first of all, uh, eloquent words yesterday and um, today it continues and then from here you'll be going to Washington and accompanying the senator's body. Um, has, has all, have you been able to wrap your head around all of this? It's, it's truly, I was thinking today, one of the biggest events in Arizona history. Unfortunately, it's, it's a sad event, but it is one of the biggest events. It's a sad event, and I think people are certainly mourning and, and grieving, but you see pangs of celebration and, and joy as we honor this, this wonderful man's life and, and legacy and how large it is and how much it has impacted Arizona and how much John McCain is identified and synonymous with the state of Arizona. You know, one of the things people always talk about his political legacy, they talk about his love of Arizona sports, uh, they talk about his military legacy. But the one thing that I don't think gets enough attention and he doesn't get enough credit for is for his wicked sense of humor. I'm he, sure something you knew about. Oh, he had a great sense of humor and he loved to joke. Uh, he loved to tell some of the same jokes over and over. I feel like I could repeat <laughs> some, some of his jokes, but he did have a, a great sense of humor. And I think that came from being a military man. I mean, if you ever saw John McCain in a VFW hall, you know, with, with other sailors and, and airmen and Marines and the rivalry between the Navy and the Army and, and the Marines, it, it was just great great fun and uh, you know his uh, his story is is so well known but I think the the story of him as a young man and and w what a hellraiser he was at the Naval Academy but then what is John what, Wayne McCain <laughs> at the Naval Academy what a soldier and and warrior he became and then his character on full display when he refused r release you know the son and grandson of four-star Navy admirals until all of his other American brothers were released with him. look everyone will opine on on his legacy and, and what stands out the most, but I, I can't let you go. I know, I know you're on a tight schedule. Without asking you what you think would be at the top of your list of John McCain's legacy. Well, I think this is a person that one thing will not be identified with him, but this idea of him being Arizona's favorite adopted son, that he chose our state. You know, 70% of the adults in our state came from somewhere else. This is a man that could have went and lived wherever he wanted in the country. And he said, I love Arizona. It is captured and enchanted me. Um, he'll forever be identified with our state like the Grand Canyon. Uh, and we're all better off for it. Yes. Governor, thank you. Thank you, Mark. I'll probably see you in Washington. You in and uh, safe travels and Godspeed with the thank senator's you. body. Thank you, Mark. All right, Governor Doug Ducey with us, and Emma and Paul will toss it back to you. All thank right, you. thanks, Mark. Yeah, we can see right there the hearse pulling out, and now is when you can expect some of those closures happening out on the streets. Looks like it's going to be a rolling closure, and if you know how those work, shut down for just a few minutes, and then they'll open them right back up.
Let's go over that route one more time. They're taking 17th Avenue northbound right now to Adams and then Adams over to Interstate 17 northbound towards Phoenix. And then they'll get off at Camelback Road and take that northbound to Central Avenue all the way to Phoenix Baptist Church, where the ceremony is expected to start around 10 a.m. this morning. And we're expecting to see a who's who on that guest list. 24 sitting U.S. senators, four former senators and leaders from not only the state of Arizona, but all over the United States. Absolutely. So at approximately 940 is one Mrs. Cindy McCain family and the hearse will arrive at North Phoenix Baptist Church. Senior Pastor Dr. No Garcia will meet with Mrs. Cindy McCain and the family upon arrival, escort them into the church for just a brief moment there. Upon arrival, an honor guard will meet the hearse and then stand watch. Right around 955, the ceremonial pallbearers will line up along the hearse. And I'd love to go through the pallbearers because I think that's so telling of the man he was, especially when you look at all of the sports stars that are part of this lineup. And not just the athletes. We spoke to Bram Resnick, who's already in Washington, D.C., preparing for tomorrow's events. And he said every person on this list was chosen specifically by John McCain. In fact, he called some of them completely out of the blue to ask if they would be a part of his funeral services and caught a few of them off guard. But yes, Emma, you mentioned the athlete Shane Doan, the retired former Phoenix, then Arizona Coyotes star, Luis Gonzalez, who won a World Series for the Diamondbacks, hit that game-winning single in 2001, and Larry Fitzgerald, who later today will be playing, or at least suiting up for, the Cardinals' final preseason game. Yeah, I mean, the list is quite long on the Paul Bearers, who are all going to be part of this ceremony. A lot of them longtime friends of the late senator. It is interesting because each person picked with so much thought and so much precision. It's what's not just, you know, friends and family, but it's it's friends with a purpose almost to continue his legacy and to continue his ideology on partis bipartisanship. And the speakers at today's memorial speak to the same idea mm -hmm. that, that you're getting across here. Um, I'm interested to hear Amazing Grace, which will be the opening hymn performed by the Brophy Student Ensemble. Um, Senator McCain and Cindy's sons, Jack and Jimmy, actually went to Brophy College Prep in Phoenix. They've been engaged with the school community and they're, and they're looking forward to hearing that. Um, but the, the speakers, Larry Fitzgerald, as you mentioned, will have a few words to share and then followed immediately by Vice President Joe Biden. Um, I think it's very interesting, not only that Biden is speaking, but that George W. Bush will be speaking in D.C., as right. will Barack Obama, the two men that John McCain lost presidential elections to. Yeah, we talked to our political insider, Bram Resnick, who right now is in Washington, D.C., preparing for the coverage that we are going to bring you there in just a bit. Bram said that when he called former President Barack Obama, apparently it took President Obama by surprise. He was actually a little bit shocked that he would be asked to speak at his funeral. But again, a lot of people saying, especially um, Doug Cole, who we had on our show yesterday, who was a former McCain staffer. This just points to the fact about I, I feel like he's just so humble, you know, in his life that he would want someone who defeated him in that 2008 presidential campaign to eulogize him. You can see in the live images on the left side of your screen and to a lesser extent up to the right that there are some people lining the streets watching the motorcade pass by on the way to the Baptist Church this morning. We saw that yesterday as well when McCain's body was taken from the mortuary down to the Arizona State Capitol. Even if people can't be a part of these ceremonies, yes. they're still finding a way to, to at least witness history firsthand. Yes, we do know that 1,000 people from the public expected to attend the memorial. We do know those tickets are long gone, uh, but people are still invited to go out and to pay their respects. Right now, 